Right, today we are going to talk about Hodgkin's lymphoma. Right, this is a special group of lymphomas. Lymphomas. Hodgkin's lymphomas. Right, so anyone will tell me, are these good lymphomas or bad lymphomas? These are good lymphomas, right? Dr. Hodgkin's put this in his pocket. These are good lymphomas, Hodgkin's lymphomas, right? Why they are good? Because the multiple reasons we discussed last time, but in the end, prognosis is good, right? Most of them are curable, uh, especially if they are diagnosed at early stage. Is that right? Now, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, how do you define Hodgkin's lymphoma? Any one of you? What are Hodgkin's lymphomas? Any one of you? Pardon? Uh, they are contiguous, their spread is contiguous, but this is not the definition of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yes? All, all, yeah, the most important thing which a student can talk about Hodgkin's lymphoma is that there are special cells in Hodgkin's lymphomas which are called Reed-Sternberg cells. This is what a student will talk, but a teacher will talk different than that. I will tell you what teacher will say. But right now we go that uh, one of the very important thing about the Hodgkin's lymphoma is that these tum tumors are characterized by the presence of a very special cell which is called Reed Sternberg Berg cells. Cell or its variants. Right, those lymphomas which are having a very special type of cell which is called Reed-Sternberg cell or its variants, they are called Hodgkin's lymphoma. Right, but this is really not the perfect explanation. Do you know why? Because Reed-Sternberg-like cells may be present sometimes in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, may be present sometimes in some solid tumors. Such cells may be present sometimes in infectious mononucleosis. So what does it mean? That for the diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma, these cells are a must, but the presence of these cells is uh, not enough. We need something more than just Reed Sternberg cells. Let me hammer your brains. They just having Reed Sternberg cells in any tissue does not make that tissue Hodgkin's lymphoma. Reed Sternberg cells should be present in an appropriate inflammatory reactive background. Let me tell you what I mean. Actually, in Hodgkin's lymphoma, when you make a section, of course you must identify Reed Sternberg cell and its variant, but actually these cells should be present in appropriate setting. Now, what is that appropriate setting? Appropriate setting is that these cells should be surrounded by inflammatory and reactive components. These cells should be surrounded by inflammatory cells and reactive components. Is that right? So, what should be the complete definition of Hodgkin's lymphomas? Hodgkin's lymphomas are those lymphomas which are characterized by the presence of Reed Sternberg cells or the variant which are present in appropriate background of reactive inflammatory cells. So these are the two components which will complete the concept of Hodgkin's lymphoma, right? Now, Hodgkin's lymphoma most of the time start with one lymph node or a chain of lymph node, right? Classically they start from lymph node. Here I should mention, but non-Hodgkin's lymphoma may start other than lymph node, lymph node area. For example, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma may start in the central nervous system. But Hodgkin's lymphoma almost always start with lymph node. This is one difference between Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. Another difference you already know, that Hodgkin's have reed Sternberg cells with an appropriate reactive background. Non-Hodgkin's usually do not have reed Sternberg cells. And if very rarely non-Hodgkin's have some cell like reed Sternberg, but a inflammatory reactive component will not be present in non-Hodgkin's. Am I clear? Then another difference, as I told you, 
Hodgkin's and non Hodgkin's will, will do review the differences again because it's worth it. Hodgkin's lymphoma versus non Hodgkin's. We have done it previously, but still it's worth it. And this time you people will tell me the differences. One difference I've told you that this is RSL positive. And usually these are RSL negative. negative. Second difference. Yes, anyone? This is almost always starting from lymph nodes. Right? Most of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma start with the lympho lymph nodes, but still almost one-third of the tissue, maybe one-third of the cases of non-Hodgkin's may be diagnosed in extra lymphoid tissue. Is that right? So it means about one-third cases of non-Hodgkin's may be found in extra lymphoid tissue. Then, and any other difference? Even in lymph node there is a difference. In Hodgkin's disease, the most commonly the group of lymph nodes which are involved are, what are these? Cervical. What is this? Supraclavicular. What is this? Axillary mediastinal. So basically, in Hodgkin's disease, most commonly these are the axial lymph nodes which involve, right? And in non-Hodgkin's, usually peripheral lymph nodes involve. Then another difference is there. In Hodgkin's disease, Waldir's ring and mesenteric lymph node less commonly involved. In Hodgkin's disease, Waldir's ring, right, and mesenteric lymph node less commonly involved. But in non-Hodgkin's disease, Waldir's ring lymphoid tissue and mesenteric lymph node more commonly involved. Is that right? Then. Very important difference. Here it was, these were axial lymph nodes. Here it was, yes, peripheral lymph node. Then I said that here are Waldir ring, Waldir's ring and mesenteric lymph node are less common. Here they are more commonly involved. Now we come to a very important difference. I know you people know, but still I will stress it in Hodgkin's disease. Spread is very orderly, right? As for example, if Hodgkin disease starts from this lymph node, from this area, it will go to the adjacent lymph node, then to the next lymph node, and then it will go to the next group of lymph node. But it will not, it is not possible most of the time that if this is first group, this is second group of lymph node, anatomically arranged, this is third group of lymph node. Usually it does not happen that Hodgkin start with one and skip the second group and can be detected in third. No. Hodgkin's moves in a very orderly, stepwise, contiguous spread. Is that right? But opposite to that, non-Hodgkin may be spreading in the body in a random fashion. Why it is so? Who will tell me? Why it is so? Maybe Hodgkin's lymphomas have studied from some TA and they know what are the lymph node group and go orderly or what? And maybe no one taught the non-Hodgkin's how to move in a stepwise fashion. Yes, anyone? Use your own brains. Two cerebral hemispheres. Why Hodgkin's lymphomas characteristically spread in a very orderly fashion? Why I'm stressing this? Because it determines in staging and it determines what kind of treatment you are going to do. And in non-Hodgkin's, it's quite possible it's, uh, you, you detect non-Hodgkin's here. Cervical, it is not present in axillary and it may be positive in, in guanal. But in Hodgkin's case, it's not possible. If Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma is present in cervical lymph node and guanal, it must be present in most of the in-between lymph node. Yes, anyone can answer this thing. Yes. Maybe the uh, non-Hodgkin's have very little adhesion proteins left. Like, um, okay, but uh, more simple answer is that Hodgkin's disease initially spread by efferent lymphatics. And then lymphatic drain from one group to the next group to the next group, right? But not non-Hodgkin's at very early stage. Malignant cells spread through the blood. And it's so simple to understand. Again, let me repeat it. In Hodgkin's disease, because initially disease, malignant cells spread through the efferent lymphatics. So usually from one group of the lymph node to the next group of lymph node. You're understanding me? But in non-Hodgkin's disease, right? From very early stage, they spread through, yes, 
through the blood, hematogenous suppride. So they can end up at random places. Right? Okay. Another difference which is very important is that in Hodgkin's disease, inf inflammatory reactive components are present. When you do histopathology in Hodgkin's disease, right in biopsy you find a lot of what? Inflammatory reactive cells. But in non-Hodgkin's, usually you don't find inflammatory reactive component under the slide. Does it make this fact that there are a lot of inflammatory cells reacting to neoplastic component here and non-Hodgkin, there are not many reactive inflammatory cells against the neoplastic component. Does this information determine some clinical feature? The features of severe inflammation may be associated with Hodgkin's and may not be associated with non Hodgkin's. So, Hodgkin's lymphoma, because they have so many inflammatory cells, those inflammatory cells are producing cytokines, so systemic features of inflammation may be there. For example, systemic manifestations are more common in Hodgkin's lymphoma than in the non Hodgkin's lymphoma. For example, the, as there are many inflammatory cells and they are reactive and they are producing cytokines, so there may be fever. Fever is more commonly seen in Hodgkin's as compared to non-Hodgkin's. There may be unexplained weight loss. Right? There may be night sweats. And even sometimes unexplained pruritus. What do you think? This fever, weight loss, night sweats, why it is occurring? The higher concentration of cytokines disrupting the function of disrupting the function of hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. That is what is regulating temperature and weight loss and night sweats and other right anorexia. Right? Anyway. So these are some basic differences in Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. Another very big difference, as I mentioned previously, because they spread in an orderly fashion, so their treatment of Hodgkin's is different than non-Hodgkin's. If Hodgkin's disease is limited, maybe you can do only local radiotherapy. But in non-Hodgkin's, usually we have to combine, even in early stage, radiotherapy with chemotherapy in most cases, but not in all. Okay. After this basic discussion, now we come to the hero of our disease. There is a cell, Reed-Strunberg cell. Let's go into detail of that cell. Right?